Yeah, good morning. It's Jim from jagfx.com. It is Saturday, the 4th of September, 2021. This is just my weekly analysis video. Obviously, I do it once a week. I'll have a look at the Forex charts, uh, the daily time frame, the charts, uh, the charts I'm trading on that time frame. And we'll just go over all the ones that have got open trades that I've called. Keep in mind, all my trade calls are called in the private JagFX Facebook group and also in the Telegram channels. Uh, everyone's more than welcome to join either of those channels or the, those groups. Uh, I even call them in Matt's Discord channel now, uh, Matt from Family Man Trading. If you want to join that, that's another option. So everyone's more than welcome to join those. Uh, they're all called live at the time. Uh, basically, the new candle opens at... 4 a.m. local for me. I'm in Vietnam and I get out of bed about 6. Well, lately I've been getting out of bed a bit earlier because I'm trading lower time frame stuff. But generally, I've called it at the time I take the trade. So it's all pretty transparent, etc. All right, let's have a look. Um, and thanks to everyone that watches these videos or has joined the, or joined, or joined the YouTube channel. It's greatly appreciated. And if you do like the video, please hit the like button or the subscribe button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Now, let's first up have a look at the news for the week ahead. So I'll just find that if I can. All right, this is the Forex Factory Economic Calendar. Uh, last week was pretty quiet. This week might be a little bit busier. Now, generally, I like to look at the... So just make sure I've got the right week. Uh, I like to look at the red ones marked in red. They're the high-impact ones. Uh, you can set up filters for this to suit, make it suit what um, you want to see, what pairs you're looking at or what currencies you're looking at. And if you, what high, uh, if you just want to see the high impact ones, you can delete these orange ones, the medium impact ones. So we've got public holiday in Canada and the US on Monday. So Monday's a quiet day. This is all in my local time. It's another part of the filtering process on Forex Factory. So this is, I'm in Vietnam, as I said, so this is all in local Vietnam time. It's the same time zone for the entire country. I live in Da Nang, which is central Vietnam, but if you want to look up this time zone, just look up Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh or something like that. All right, it does, it is a bit busy with a couple of things. Um, Tuesday, first Tuesday in the month, normally interest rates, oh, new message, interest rate news out of Australia. So that's on um, Tuesday morning. Uh, not expecting a change by the looks. Wednesday, we've got Canadian interest rates and they're not expecting a change. And we keep on going down and the main refinancing rate, which is basic European uh, interest rates. It's already below zero, so it doesn't really matter, but that's the euro. So we've got three interest rate newses, newses, news. Australia, Canada, and out of Europe. And I think the next big one, yeah, um, Canadian employment or unemployment numbers on Friday. So there's sort of four big events there to watch out for during the week on the news. It's this week coming up. All right, let's have a look at the, before we go into the charts, I'll just bring up this Word document. Every week you'll see this. This just explains what's on my charts. There's a lot of lines, there's a lot of colours, there's things mentioned, there's indicators. Pause the video, read this, or take a screenshot. Uh, I generally explain as I'm going along anyway, so it's no big deal. Uh, I've got three moving averages and a QMP filter. That's the red and green dots you see on the chart. You can read about what it, how it's presented or how it's formed here. Uh, what red lines, the trend lines are, green trend lines, blue trend lines, you've got grey vertical lines, how sell trades are designated, how buy trades are designated, how stops are designated, break even are designated, and big numbers, they're normally a green line, green dash line. And below we have a um, MACD platinum, zero lag MACD, and, and it explains there, but I'll go through all this anyway, but you can pause the video, read all that, just explains what the indicators are in this in roughly their basic settings. If you want to know more, you can always contact me or through one of those social media channels, no problems at all. All right, let's get on the charts, enough dilly-dallying. Dilly-dallying, haven't had that word for years. 
All right, this is my, this is trading view. This is my watch list on the right. You'll notice it's probably got three extra pairs. I've added the pound USD, Euro Yen and Euro Aussie. I've just increased my uh, watch list numbers by three. That basically gives me an extra, uh, I just want to watch correlation. So for example, you'll see there's probably four pairs involving the Aussie. It's uh, four pairs involving the yen. There's four pairs involving the pound, etc. So it's just it just make my list a little bit bigger, and we'll go from there. Right, if it's highlighted in blue, uh, normally if it's dark blue, it means it's a trade on. No, no action's been taken. When it's highlighted this light blue, it means action's been taken on those trades. No highlight, no trade. So I don't even look at those pairs. Uh, these two bottom ones are just for, um, just out of curiosity, the US 500 and Bitcoin. And this one highlighted in orange is, I'm going to look at something on Monday. So that's what that means. All right, so let's go through the pairs. Aussie CAD, buy trade taken down here. You can, with all my trade, just look on the right here, you'll see notes about what, what time I took the trade, what the signal was, and my thoughts on that trade. So you can pause the video, read those notes there. Uh, if you see writing on the left here, generally refers to some private trading I'm doing on my um, VPS. So don't worry about that too much. So this is what we're mainly looking at. So there's a buy signal here, taken here, a high risk trade, based on the, the regular bullish divergence there, into the trend, against the trend. Buy was in here, popped up nicely. Uh, you know, like as soon as the MACD is through the zero level, this is the MACD Platinum. And remember with the MACD Platinum, we're looking to sell when it's above the zero level. So here's the zero level, this gray dotted line. So we're looking to sell when it's above it and buy when it's below. So possibly took a buy here and it went nowhere and I would have either been stopped out or closed that out somewhere. Probably stopped out, took a second buy in here. It's going up nicely. Would have closed half and I brought my stop up. Um, as soon as the MACD platinum goes through the zero level on a high risk trade like this, we're looking at it um, probably on that candle here or probably the second candle, the bearish candle, the bullish candle, definitely closing half and bringing the stop up and we're going to run it up. The stop loss is this red dotted line. There's the entry there. So looking good on the AUSCAD. In the meantime, I'm drawing these trend lines in for potential bearish divergence. I just keep on adjusting these every day. If I keep on adjusting, it keeps on going up. Yeah, my video's jammed up now. Yeah, if I keep on adjusting these every day, they keep on going up and they're no longer valid, I just delete them. Just a bit of preparation, as I always say, uh, just to give me a heads up what's coming. So that's the AUSCAD. We're in a buy with... Close half, tighten up the stop in a no lose situation. Oz Japanese yen, or the Aussie yen. Bit slow, the old. Um... Okay, Japanese, Aussie Japanese yen. I just had a bit of a technical issue there. Uh, the last trade was this buy here. Uh, it's gone up nicely, gone up, popped through. It was a high risk trade again. Again, you can read my notes. Uh, it's popped up through the MACD Platinum through the zero level. Probably on this big bullish candle here. It's hard to see, but there's a, a faint blue line. When I'm against the trend, I tend to look at this faint blue line, not the brown line. It's already through the zero level. Close half, bring my stop up. In the meantime, I had this previous sell on, and it already closed half down in here somewhere and brought the stop in. That's now stopped out. I just left it on the charts to show you overall small profit on that cell. Now we're in a nice buy heading up, heading up. So what I'll do is I'll delete the cell. It's no longer valid. I've already removed the notes. As I said, overall small profit on that cell. So it's all good. Now we're squarely in a buy trade, nothing else. And we're in a probably no lose situation with the buy. As I said, we would have closed half up here. So this, this even though the stop's below the entry, it's overall profitable, can't lose. I was in New Zealand, highlighted in 
yellow for a reason on Monday. Now, this is a little bit looking at a buy here on Monday. The good thing about TradingView, as I say every week, TradingView will show me what's coming up on Monday. So the QMP filter dots and or the MACD platinum dots will present on the close, on a Friday close. MT4, MT5 don't do that. So if you were looking at MT4, MT5, this same signal wouldn't be there until Monday's open. It'll print the coloured dot on the Friday close candle, then you just take the trade on the Monday open. There's no difference. It's just the trading view gives me a heads up, and it's one of the things I like about trading view. So we have a buy signal here. Now, this is a high-risk trade. Look at the MAs. It's spreading to the downside. So the trend is down. But the thing is, price has been heading down, heading down, lower lows on price. But the oscillator, the MACD Platinum, has been going up. So there's regular bullish divergence there. This trend line, you could say it's been broken. I've, I've been watching this trend line for my private sort of trading. Um, it's come down. It's just popped through there. It's not convincing. If you if you normally risk 2% on a trade, and you take this buy, you know, look at risking, say, half a percent or 1% and keep your stop below the low here. It's a high risk trade, as I said, but I'll call it as a trade on Monday. Another thing is the MACD Platinum's already above the zero level, so I'm losing one of my trade management tools. Not a big deal when it comes to divergence, because one side of the divergence is definitely on the correct side of the zero level. Doesn't matter too much if there's a, the other side's not when it comes to divergence. But yeah, take the trade here, be careful, high risk trade against the trend. It's a Monday trade. It's the only Monday trade. CAD Swiss, don't know why I'm losing my voice, I haven't been talking that much. Still in um, very strict lockdown here, and at least for another couple of days. Not sure what happens, but can't leave the building, so it's very strict. The only time I leave the building is for um, COVID testing. The anal, anal probe, nasal probe. What did I say, anal probe, nasal probe. All right, we've got a buy here. This is a CAD Swiss. Um, going nowhere fast. Um, pop. Yeah, you know, MACD Platinum here is it's a high risk trade based on regular bullish divergence. Uh, MA is already tight. It's gone up. Look, close half, bring the stop up. It, the, the original stop was down here. Don't waste your time. Just, it looks like it wants to go down. We've got lower lows on price. So it looks like it's all wants to turn to the downside. So just jam it up. It's still in profit, but it's not convincing. You know what I mean? Euro Swiss. All right. This is a buy trade signal down here. High risk trade against the trend. Started off nicely. Then we had the bearish candle and popped up with that big bullish candle. This is where you would hit the MAs. Close half. Bring the stop right up below this low here. So it's end up and we're just slowly grinding up, which is good. And in the meantime, again, we're drawing these trend lines, looking for a possible bearish divergence. So that's the uh, Euro Swiss. Euro USD. I'm struggling with my voice here. All right, another one that had a sell back here. Went down, went down, went down. We closed half either in here or in here somewhere, I'm not sure, and brought the stop down. Uh, and as you can see, it's been, took a buy, high risk buy. So we, we had a small over, a profit on the sell. Now we're in the buy. It's popped up nicely after this big bullish candle here. Close half, bring the stop up, and it's just grinding up. Can't lose on the buy side. So that sell is no longer valid. We're out of that. I just want to leave it on the chart to show you how we dealt with it. So we're out of the cell. Uh, we're in buy mode. Now, again, start drawing trend lines. Let's hit this sort of level here, resistance level. So we're just watching that. So the buy, get rid of that. Looking good on the buy, can't lose. And uh, now my computer's jammed up. 
Yeah, I'm struggling with my voice, so I'm just taking a couple of breaks to drink some water. Yeah, um, look, there was non-farm payrolls or the US employment numbers, which gave that little spike on Friday. So we'll just wait and see what happens here. But the buy's looking good on the Euro USD. Pound Swiss. Uh, what are we in here? Just taking a sweet time. Another trade that was a sell from here. Came down nicely, came down. Came to this previous uh, support level. So we would have closed half in here or definitely on this candle here. If not, brought the stop in. It's now been taken out. So we had a profit on the sell. I'm not sure it wouldn't have been a big one, but it's a profit all the same. So we'll get rid of that. If, uh, oh, geez. Nothing's going fast here today. Sorry about that. So we broke this support level. And we've popped back up again, back to it, and sort of bounced off it a little bit, then broke through it, took the buy, high risk, high risk trade, but not not a. So we're trying to get up back to the high. Uh, the MACD platinum through the zero level on Friday, so you could close half and bring your stop up, and we're trying to aim for this high. It's stuck in a bit of a range here, as you can see. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? That's a pound Swiss looking all right, both sides. Pound yen, uh, going nowhere fast. Another one that's sort of range bound, designated by the blue trend lines there. Another one that had a sell here, came down, closed half in here somewhere. And and the reason we closed half there, or we could have closed half in here. Hang on, I'm just trying to figure out where. It's either here or in here. And bring the stop in again stopped out on the sell so we've had an overall small profit on the sell which is good so we'll get rid of that and again my all right i don't know why the platform keeps on jamming up on me and support keep on pausing the video all right so we're in this buy only going nowhere fast macd platinum through the zero level down here a uh, bullish candle on Thursday and nothing candle on Friday. I'm bringing the stop up anyway. Just this original stop would have been down here. Tighten it up, reduce the potential for loss. See how we go. Pound New Zealand. Um, yeah, this is one's killing me, absolutely annihilating me on the lower time frame charts. As you can see, if you look here, I'm actually on the buy side and the sell side. Buy side's getting hammered. Um, but in the daily charts on this trading, which is good, uh, we kept on persisting with this range bound. We broke through that level there, which is great. So on this candle here, would have closed half, would have brought my, my stop, would have been up here somewhere initially, would have brought the stop down to here. Now it's definitely popped down nicely, so the stop's down below the entry level. So it's the pound New Zealand. Eventually the trend broke and we were on it, which is great to see. New Zealand CAD. So most of my trades are profitable, which is good, considering how crappy the market's been. Again, range bound sort of pair, and another one's broke the, took a buy here. I'll probably get rid of that cell. It's no longer, oh, it's not on my chin. Right, took the buy in here, uh, popped up. This big bullish candle here, broke through this previous high. You know, if you haven't closed half already, you close half, bring the stop up. The original stop would have been down here. Bring it up here. Can't lose on this. Again, trend lines are drawn in place, ready for potential reversals. So we'll just bring that stop loss up there. So there's a stop there. Buy there now. Looking good. USD Japanese Yen. This is one that is giving me a bit of a headache. It's stuck in a range. This thing has been going nowhere fast. Uh, and on the lower time frames, it's just downright ugly. It's tough on a prep trade at the moment. Uh, the four hour, six hour, eight hour charts just give me a bit of a rough time about it. It has broken down slightly to the downside. The buy trade was taken here. It was all very tight, all very messy. Uh, you can read my notes there. Had a couple of pop downs, pop ups. You can see by these ugly candles here. Uh, this red dot. On the MACD platinum above the zero level, uh, just give me an opportunity to bring the stop 
nice and tight. It's going nowhere fast. Yeah, you know, like you could even consider getting out. It's just waiting for it to break this range. Still in it, stops a lot tighter. It's my only losing trade at the moment. So, so there's the entry. There's where price is. There's a tight stop. So it's all a bit messy. Uh, gold. We're going to buy from back here, which is good. We popped up nicely. This big bullish candle here, close half. Uh, my original stop was down in here, I think, somewhere. Uh, I would have brought it up nice and tight under here. On this closing half, it's came down back towards my entry, popped up again nicely, and it's continued to grind up. We're at this previous high now. Uh, stops inside the entry level. We've got a red dot on the MACD platinum above the zero level, so that means I'm in sell mode, thinking about sells. Um, but um, we're not yet. That's the grey line, it's just that is a warning line. So we're at this previous high, popped up nicely on Friday, just waiting to see, can't lose on that, so it's all good. So that's the gold. Um, just have a look at the US 500. It's the overall stock market for the US, obviously. As I say every week, just it's the perfect uptrend, perfect. Look at those MAs. Just buy the dips, as they say. And in the meantime, we still have this regular bearish divergence that never seems to follow through. Uh, and we're just grinding up slowly. There is a red dot on the MACD platinum above the zero level. So if you were in this buy, which you wouldn't have got much out of it, consider lightening, lightening the load or closing half, etc. Bitcoin against the US dollar. Uh, I do trade in currencies or uh, crypto, so it's something I'll watch nowadays. Um, we've got this bearish divergence, but this level here is 50,000. That's sticking point, obviously. It's a big round number. It would be in people's head, whether subconsciously or not. It's a big round number. So that's 50,000, and it's just sticking there. Uh, I'm in the Ethereum at the moment, so that's shot up nicely, but Bitcoin's just struggling to break this level. Uh, let's just have a look at these other ones. Got a, It's only 22 minutes. USD, Singapore dollar. Uh, my initial buy was here and took a small loss in here. Now setting up for potential other buy. MACD Platinum still well below the zero level. There's still big, regular, uh, big hidden bullish divergence possibly forming. The US dollar's been dropping down, hence the um, uh, this pair's been coming down. There's a nice sort of double top up here, and it's probably done. It's running out of steam. We're at the 240 moving average, so I'm looking to go to the upside here. Uh, pound USD is one of the new pairs I added. Uh, so this pair actually moves pretty well. Um, at the moment, going nowhere fast, just waiting for a potential, see what happens. <laughs> Euro Yen, another one I added. Uh, potentially setting up for to the sell side, MACD platinum's above the zero level, so that's the, what I'm thinking. And there's this big divergence here, which is hidden um, bearish divergence, possibly forming. Euro Aussie. Um, in my other trading, I was short on this, which is good. In here, uh, some people got in a bit earlier. I understand that. Uh, it was a high risk trade against a trend, but it's popping down. And it's just falling off a cliff at the moment. That's the Aussie, strength in the Aussie, strength in New Zealand, which means this is the other way around, so it's going the other way. All right, that's it for the charts. I'll just bring up that Word document again so you can have a read it if you didn't already do so. So you wonder what the lines, etc., were. And, um, yeah, so all the trades we've got on the watch list here on the right all by the USD Japanese yen are going the right direction, which is good. I know it's been pretty boring for me calling actual trade calls, but when we're already in trades, there's, uh, you don't really want new ones anyway, do you? So like I said, all these trades are called in the Facebook group and the Telegram channels and the Discord channel. So you're more than welcome to join them. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of the JagFX family. It's much appreciated. Enjoy the weekend.
stay safe wherever you are and I will chat to you good folk probably during the week sometime. Cheers.